Here's that slide from the last part. And our starting point is over here on the bottom left. Here's the alcohol and the hydrogen chloride. And in order for any reaction to take place, some energy has to be absorbed by these molecules to get some chemistry going. And so this first little red hump represents the energy absorbed. Uh, in order to start breaking this hydrogen chlorine bond and to start forming the oxygen hydrogen bond. So the dotted lines represent bonds in the process of either breaking or forming and it corresponds to the peak in this little hump. That's called a transition state. This is not a chemical product that you could isolate. It's just showing us kind of a middle ground between a reactant becoming a product. The product of that first step of the mechanism is at the bottom of this first little hump and it shows that hydrogen having already transferred to the alcohol and the chlorides by itself. Uh, and the smallness of this little red hump means that that's not a big obstacle to overcome. This big blue hill is the obstacle. This corresponds to making that second step happen. This corresponds to that rate determining step because now our transition state is showing that carbon oxygen bond in the process of breaking. And that's the real key. If we can literally get over this hump, uh, we're on our way to making product. And the product of step two is at this little valley. It shows our carbocation. And once that has formed, step three is the green part here. That's another little hump we have to get over. But that's just the forming of the carbon chlorine bond. So the red step, the green step, pretty easy to do. The big hurdle, the big hill to climb is, is getting... Uh, that second step to occur. And for other alcohols, this blue part might represent an even steeper climb or sometimes uh, even uh, easier to, to get over. But that is, again, the rate determining step that determines whether we get any product at all or how quickly we get it. And so it's just another way to think about these three different reactions all coming together to form the overall reaction. That previous slide summarizes the important terminology regarding reaction mechanisms. And once again, here's that central step, the important rate determining step for what happens when you have tertiary alcohols uh, in the process of forming the corresponding halide. You have to be able to form this carbocation. And as it says, carbocations are unstable, but if we can get them to form, uh, that's really the key for, for making the overall reaction work. And so I referred to this as the bottleneck step. It's kind of like imagining cars going down a highway and monitoring how fast the traffic is moving. We're not so concerned with the parts where everyone's moving at 60 miles an hour and everything's free and clear. We tend to focus on the backups, the construction sites, the fender benders, the parts of the highway where we're likely to get stuck. And so in chemistry, we focus on the backups, the, the parts that are the bottlenecks, if you will. And so determining what makes a carbocation stable and how fast it can form, that's a big part of, of learning about how alcohols behave and what we can do with alcohols. They tend to be cheap or easily to obtain, and it's nice if we can turn those alcohols into a variety of other products. And oftentimes the first step is replacing that OH group with a halogen. This slide here summarizes the idea that tertiary alcohols react fastest compared to other alcohols because they form their carbocations faster. Methyl cations are very unstable and so they don't form in very large amounts. They don't form very quickly so methanol doesn't react nearly as fast. And so knowing about the mechanism is really the key to understanding why these different classes of alcohols are so different in how they react.